I'm the last of 11 children, so there are lots of stories between us all. I was born in Indiana, but when I was four, we moved to the state of Arkansas. Years later, I was visiting my older sister, and the conversation turned to the old house we used to live in, and she asked me, You were so young when we moved away from that house. Do you have any real memories of it? I explained to her that I had a few fleeting memories, but the only one that really stuck out is one day I was walking to the bathroom from the living room. In order to do this, you had to enter the kitchen and then take a left turn. In our kitchen, the sink was below a large window, and on the other side of that large window was a pitch of angled roof about two feet wide that was above the stairs that went down to our cellar. When we were young, we used to play a game we called Dairy Queen. We would sit on this pitch of the roof while our mother handed us drinks through the window like a drive through Well, anyway, I explained to her that on that day in question, I was walking to the bathroom and I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. I looked over and saw a young girl sitting on the pitch of the roof outside the window looking in the window. I told her that I remembered this because, well, it was so unusual and I did not recognize the girl. I explained to her that she, to the best of my recollection, looked to be about 10 or 11 years old. She had short red hair and thick plastic framed glasses. I have no memory of what I did. I don't know if I went to get my mother or just ignored it. Again, I was like four years old. As I was telling the story, I was absentmindedly fiddling with my phone, and when I looked up, my older sister had tears in her eyes, and she was visibly shaken and ghostly white. Through her tears, she told me that when she was about seven years old, that she was in the kitchen with a lot of our other siblings getting a drink, and looked up in that same window and saw a little girl that she described as about 10 or 11 years old, short red hair, with large plastic framed glasses. This would have been about two years before I was born and about six years before I saw this girl. A few days later, another one of my sisters who was in between us in age came over to visit as well. As my older sister was telling the younger sister about this, she also started crying. She said she saw the exact same girl about two or three years after my older sister had seen her and a few years before I saw her. My mother, who was the ultimate skeptic and believed in nothing, even remotely supernatural, told us through her eye rolls that the lady we bought the house from had a young granddaughter who passed away when she was young. She didn't remember much about the girl, but she did tell us that the preacher who was in charge of the church that we attended when we lived there was still the preacher and had been the preacher for many years before we had gone there. When my younger sister got back home, she went to the church and told a little white lie to the preacher that she was doing some research on the old house and that our mother had told her about the lady we bought the house from and the unfortunate passing of her granddaughter. The preacher said, oh yes, that was most unfortunate she was such a sweet little girl and we loved having her here. My sister said, my mom didn't remember much about her. Do you remember what she looked like? I'm sure you can see exactly where this is going. But the preacher said, oh yes, she was adorable. She had the cutest red hair and the poor girl didn't see well because she had Down syndrome. So she had really thick black plastic framed glasses. He must not have noticed the panic on my sister's face because he then told my sister, in fact, her headstone is in the cemetery behind the church if you'd like to go see it. My sister, in fact, did not want to go see it and immediately excused herself and got the hell out of there. So, yeah, while I roll my eyes at 99% of ghost stories, I am absolutely certain that I've seen one. I definitely believe in ghosts, but the creepiest experiences I have ever had was in my wife's old apartment back when we were dating. It is a single family residence in the Boston area, 
and probably about mm, 100 years old, maybe a little older. It's hard to explain, but over the 18 months that she lived there, I became convinced that there was a spirit in the home who did not like men, and there was especially negative energy in my wife's bedroom on the first floor and in the basement. I'm not a psychic, so here's what I mean. Every time a man was in the house, myself or her roommate's boyfriend's friends, I felt like someone was watching you. It got to the point where we couldn't even have our alone time because again, hard to explain, but every nerve in my body was screaming. Someone was in the room watching me. Every time a man slept over, we would go to sleep, if I could at all, and in the morning, Every single drawer and cabinet in the kitchen would be wide open. I'm talking 20 to 30 drawers and cabinets. My wife was like, oh, the cat must have knocked them open. Repeatedly? In places above the sink? And pulled out the drawers? Speaking of the cat, it was a super friendly, playful cat, loved chasing lasers, and loved to be in your lap. On many occasions, the room would suddenly get stuffy and muted, and during these times, the cat would often freeze, stop what it was doing, stare at a random point in the room, and hiss. The cat would also never go into my wife's room, ever. The basement was creepy as hell, and as a grown man, I was sketched out when doing laundry. I always felt like I was being watched, and while nothing ever happened, again, the feeling I had when I was down there was pure fear, like I have never felt. Things came to a head one night when I wasn't there. My wife's roommate, their bedrooms were up on a half floor, was sick, so she slept on the couch in the living room. Her boyfriend stayed upstairs in the bedroom. In the middle of the night, he woke up screaming bloody murder. Apparently, he snapped awake in a sweat, and there was a girl standing in the corner with her face to the wall. He called out his girlfriend's name because he thought it was her, and the girl turned around, and it clearly wasn't her, because in this guy's words, she had markings like claw marks all over her face, and her mouth opened, and she just screamed at me, so I screamed. That was enough for me to never spend the night there again. My wife is a skeptic and sort of laughs it off, but it has never happened in any place we have lived in since. And her roommates from that time definitely believe something was up. My grandma passed away when I was about 17. My niece was around four or five, very self-aware, and the death of her great-grandmother was very confusing for her since it was her first loss. She would bring it up a lot at the most random times and want to talk about great grandma Kay. In hindsight, this was probably healthy, but it also made everyone uncomfortable because once she started, she just would not drop it and you'd be caught in a long, painful conversation that always ended with us having to reiterate grandma was dead, gone forever, and never coming back. One night, my niece was getting ready for bed and wanted to go through a book I had gotten her. It was that huge book of pictures from the Hubble telescope. As we were looking through it and my niece was asking me a few questions about all the stars and stuff, my great oratory skills must have done something to spark in her young little mind the sheer magnitude of the spectacle we were seeing. She suddenly asked if that space was where great grandma was. I started to explain in the best way I could that I didn't really understand what she meant and that though some people believe you go elsewhere when you die, I personally didn't and whatever else. Then she said she had some of great grandma's jewelry and wanted to show me and pulled a little box out that she had hidden away in the bed full of my grandma's costume jewelry and some other effects. Things started to get a little intense at this point. We were alone in this back bedroom and my sister was quite a ways away, no one else in the house. My niece was all wrapped up in her bed 
an electric heater humming along beside her, and an old, tiny TV was playing some Disney movie in the corner. She asked another question, which I've since forgotten what it was, and as I started to talk in no particular order, I felt a cold breeze over my neck and the hair stand up on end. The heater, which had been mostly silent, made a very violent bang, and a primal fear gripped me. On a dime, the room was like energized, hanging on a knife edge. I stopped talking, looked at my niece, and watched her sit up looking at the corner of the room and say, Grandma? I followed her eyes to that corner. The door was barely cracked and between where it swung open and a closet stood, there was a small, dark space with a coat rack. A bathrobe hung on the coat rack with a scarf wrapped among the hooks over it. My grandma passed away from cancer and had been wasting away for over a year. When she passed, she weighed less than 80 pounds and walked around in a bathrobe with a scarf wrapped around her head. I'm not sure what I saw exactly, but it was like a small, shrunken, and tan form in that bathrobe and scarf, like it took form there and was going to emerge from that space. The cliché about your blood running cold is legit. I hit the freaking ejection button on the whole situation and looked away, standing up and loudly saying, okay, that's enough of that and broke my niece's attention from whatever the hell was going on over there. Adrenaline or whatever it was, I didn't even bother to check the situation again and walked over and opened the door, mostly covering up the space with the damn coat rack with the door and getting my sister. My sister is an evil woman and was very angry about this bedtime disturbance. She passed me in the hall on the way back, and I heard as she walked into the bedroom behind me, my niece say, Mom, we saw Grandma. And my sister cut her off, yelling that it was bedtime, and she needed to cut the Grandma crap off and go to bed and whatever else. I felt bad that she was getting in trouble and ashamed and embarrassed about what just happened, so I just kind of lingered outside sheepishly. My sister has gotten progressively worse since then and eventually lost custody of my niece for being terrible. Anyway, my niece seeing a ghost and then getting yelled at for it put a pretty weird cap on the whole experience. I eventually went back in there after promising my sister no more BS and tucked my niece in. She kept trying to ask me quietly if I saw her too and I just ignored the question and said it's time for bed. Good night. We'll go do something fun tomorrow. It's been years since this happened, and my niece is growing up, swapping her grainy old Disney movies on a 20-inch TV for an iPad and TikTok, and the cold back bedroom she shared with her mom into her own new big room at her dad's house. But she's asked me a few times since then, do you remember when we saw Grandma? I've never given her an answer but would like to someday. I'm just not sure what to say. I don't believe in ghosts, and I was really high at the time, probably in a mentally suggestible space because of it. I'm not sure enough of what I saw, but there's no doubt that the heater made that loud banging sound it had never made before or since, and I have no explanation for how absolutely and how suddenly I went from completely fine to absolutely gripped by cold fear. The whole room went from perfectly normal to synced up, energized, and very, very cold before I even knew what was happening. My mom was in the hospital 50 miles away. I was 19. We were pretty sure this was it. I was home alone. My parents' house is big. It's off the beaten path on a small lagoon. My dad had been staying up at the hospital. That night, I went to bed at about eh, 1 a.m. I was playing on my laptop. My room was in a separate wing of the house. It can be sealed off with a single locking door. The door was shut, but not locked. I have always been scared of the dark. So I had the lights in my wing on. 
As I was messing around on GameFAQs, I saw the lights in my wing turn off. All of them. The band of light under the door went black. I hopped up in bed and stared at it. My bedroom door was unlocked and I was debating getting up to lock it when the shut door slammed. As in it sounded like someone straight up kicked the bottom of the door with all their strength. I remember squeaking in shock. It took me about six seconds to be up on both feet with a blade, about four paces back and just right of the door. I remember thinking if the door swung open, I could be on whoever it was almost instantly. I was also silently cursing that there was no light under the door anymore. No way to see the shadow of whoever was out there. Nothing happened. I was fighting off the fear of the situation and stupidly decided that going on a fence was all that was left. I didn't have a phone in my room and my Nokia was in another wing of the house charging. I threw the door open with my knife low and my left hand in a guarded position. There was no one there. I tossed the hallway light switch on. There was no one in my wing. There was no one in the house. The burglar alarm was still on. Confused, I turned on the main house lights and sealed the wing off, locking the door between the main house and my area. I went back to my room and just sat there with my laptop open. My bedroom door now had a slight bow in it. A couple hours passed with me worriedly lying in bed. Around 3 a.m., the lights under the door went dark. That left me terrified. My knife seemed pretty insignificant, and my previous dumb courage had ran out. I scooted my bed, no easy task, against my bedroom door. Grateful, the door opened inward. It all felt so wrong, like something was angry with me. I retreated to my closet and waited for the sun to come up. When the skylight in my room got bright, my courage returned, and I moved the bed and exited my room. The wing had been unlocked, which required a key from the other side. I heard footsteps coming down the stairs in the main house and realized my dad was home. I felt a little foolish as obviously he had been responsible for turning the lights off the second time. I led my greeting with, oh, so it was you who turned all the lights off? He looked at me and replied, what? I got home about 10 minutes ago. I have zero clues what happened that night, but it never happened before that night or after. Whatever it was, it seemed to like the dark and wasn't a fan of the doors. And it seemed to be in my wing of the house. My parents built the house and nothing had ever taken place there. My bedroom door at my parents' house still has a bow in it to this day. This was almost 20 years ago. My mom is still alive and for that, I am extremely grateful. I had an ex years back that was really into ghosts and haunted stuff. We would go and explore haunted and abandoned places all the time. I was into photography and loved taking pictures of urban decay, so I was always down for some exploring. I have had two experiences that gave me the chills. The first one, we went to this abandoned farmhouse checking out the property in the late evening as it's just getting dark. There was a large shed garage area attached to it. Just after we made it in, we got an uneasy feeling and started hearing what sounded like a pack of wolves running towards us in the distance barking and growling from the other side of the field. We beelined it back to my truck as the sound of them kept getting closer. My ex-girlfriend got inside and I opened my door and jumped onto my running board and the noise just stopped. I stood there and nothing, no wolves or anything. We were like, what the hell? So we just left. Several years later, this property was on the news as someone else who was exploring it found a complete torture chamber in the basement. Talk about weird as hell. It was torn down shortly after that discovery. The second time, we were at the east coast of Canada. Cape Breton is known to be very haunted. We decided to go to a very old cemetery at 2 a.m. It was a nice night. There was a full moon, so it was nice and bright out. 
we got a very chill vibe. We were wandering around for like an hour looking at gravestones from the late 1700s to the 1800s when we stumbled across a gravestone all on its own about 20 to 30 feet into the wooded area and completely overgrown. We started pulling back some of the vines so we could read the name and date on it. As soon as we read it out loud, we got this ice cold chill down our spines and our hair started standing on end. It honestly felt like we really pissed someone off and they didn't want us there anymore. It was weird and I cannot really explain it. It felt like someone was there as we walked around a few more minutes and that's when we decided <laughs> to get the hell out of there. As we were pulling out through the gates, it looked like a shadow or like a dark figure in the mirrors behind us making sure we left. It creeped us the hell out. I'm still skeptical. I have been to at least a hundred abandoned or haunted places. I have done some ghost tours too over the years and had zero experiences other than those two. Neither can really be explained. <laughs>